I enjoy one-liners. A short sentence, pithy sentence, that sums up a situation very quickly. I'm sure if you go around shops, you will see the uh, little plaques like this one. They're for sale and somebody has been able to write a few words and it just catches the moment. You know the one, he who laughs last. But I have my own version of it. Here's the one that you know about. He who laughs last, laughs the longest. I have this hanging up in the study. He who laughs last, didn't get the joke. And maybe there's a truth in that, just as much as there might have been in the older one. But one-liners, I saw a couple recently. They're called the Nobody Knows. And I'm going to put uh, each one up on screen. Here's the first one coming now so that you might see it. Nobody knows what I do until I don't do it. You have maybe seen it in places. I think I saw it in an office where someone was working and uh, it was to make people think, obviously, uh, that the person, their work might not have been noticed, but when they're not there to do it, oh, suddenly it is. Nobody knows what I do until I don't do it. And in life, people perhaps do a lot of things for us, even in our families or in different walks of life, and we take it for granted. But when it stops, or perhaps when they are not there, we begin to reflect and say, now I realize what they did. The other one is, nobody knows what we have until we don't have it. When the things we have taken for granted are removed, we really miss them. Now that speaks to us mightily at the moment. We are living in the COVID scene, uh, a virus you can't see, and it has removed everything that we have enjoyed and used. Socially, meeting with friends, going on holidays, we just assumed that's our right. And something beyond us has pulled the brakes on it and we don't have it. And maybe in the next few weeks or a month, the restrictions will get tighter. And we really miss our relationships and our involvement with others. But you say, did we take them all for granted? And did we take people for granted? Unfortunately, throughout life, we see that phrase is pertinent for today. Jobs, work, leisure, going to a football match. Now you can't do it. And you miss it. In the church scene, where I'm involved as a minister, we had an outside door service just last Sunday. And we had to meet the regulations, obviously, and do everything very carefully. But it did mean uh, a sense where people could see one another rather than a virtual service. Comments I got after that meeting were, we really needed that. You see, we take church for granted. And now it's not there the same way, and it can be missed. Or maybe we just assumed it was there, it's always there for us, and now it's not. And perhaps where we were complacent, we have found we don't have it as much. You see, nobody knows what we have until we don't have it. And when you come to Jesus, Jesus was really good with the one-liners. And Jesus would have asked us today, look, would you stop and take stock of things? Take stock of what you don't have, what you miss. Take stock of who has been important to you and you took them for granted. Just take stock, maybe even of our own individual lives. When I go to Luke's Gospel, uh, for example, written by Luke in the New Testament, Focusing on Jesus, uh, he writes some of the phrases that Jesus said. Now, Jesus tended not to force his views on others. He left a thought, and he was a brilliant picture framer. He could leave a thought or story in your mind, but he also could give a phrase that got to the heart of the matter. And Luke captures those. And uh, here's one where Jesus says, stop, take stock, 
and in a few words he gets it all together. I think it's Luke chapter 9. What does it profit a person if they gain the whole world but lose themselves? Or perhaps an older translation would put it, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world but he loses his own soul? Soul, the very essence of who you are, your being, everything that centres around you. And that one-liner does take stock and it does get to the heart of things that are important. Because we are pushed and pressurised today in a very commercial, consumer-driven world to get, to accumulate, to get to the top. And you can be caught into that in such a rush that the big important thing, even about God or about life, that big important thing is pushed to the side. And it's only after a while, when we look back over the years, we can say, you know, did I lose something of myself? Or even in the worst scene, did I lose something of my soul? Because Jesus wants us to see that God made us to be in relationship with him. God made us to know him trust him, to enjoy him, so that God might shape everything for us. And the danger is we don't realise what we have in Jesus until maybe we have missed him or the opportunities have just disappeared. Jesus, of course, tells us in taking stock that that can be costly can be challenging. If you want to change somebody from the inside out, well, that's going to mean a rethinking of our views, our values, even God. In another book in the New Testament, the book of 2 Corinthians, the a person called Paul, a key follower of Jesus after Jesus' death and resurrection, Paul, who wrote so many letters in the New Testament of the Bible, he put it this way. The things that are seen are temporary, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And that takes you another step forward on the one-liner from Jesus. Because then you say, well, even though I gained everything, it's temporary. But perhaps the most important thing to gain is God because then that's eternal. So, when you read one in the shop, pause and think. But then think of what Jesus has said and ask yourself as I ask myself. Well, when Jesus says these things, such as, what does it mean if you gain everything but lose yourself? And who you are? That statement can be challenging. And it might mean we have to go and rethink or turn everything upside down. But Jesus never said it would be easy. In fact, you can't follow Jesus if it's so easy. Because it cost him everything. And there's a cost to us.